I've been asked several times about where all these bolts go. Well, do you remember the homemade oil pan bolts? I love these things. These are fantastic. They worked great for a bolt that only gets 5 pounds of torque and it solved a problem. But I've got buckets upon buckets of used engine bolts from old 4G63s and have identified all the front case and oil filter housing bolts right here on the workbench. Also, check the description for something you can copy and paste. What I wrote down here is this is the quantity, the diameter, the length, and the grade. The front case bolts are all on the top row. They're flange bolts without washers. 420s, 125, 140, and a big 30. I've got the top right one wrong right now, but I'll fix it in a minute. The oil pump bolts are the five matching short grade 4s, or if you've got a 7 bolt, there's four of them in a screw. The bolt that goes on the oil pump shaft is a grade 10 flange bolt. The oil filter housing bolts have captive lock washers. There's always at least one 40 and a 20, but the long bolts vary depending on which oil filter housing you're using. I'll have to chase down different bolts because I'm changing the oil filter housings to one that uses a sandwich style cooler. This is the one I poured in the oil filter housing video. The five matching M6 bolts belong to the rear main seal housing. The tensioner bolts are a piece of cake to identify because they're M8 shoulder bolts. All manual transmission 6 bolt cars use 22.5 millimeter flywheel bolts, and all 7 bolt cars use 21.5 millimeter flywheel bolts. Don't get them confused if you're working with both generations of parts. Measure them. Now I'm going to get to cleaning these things up and putting the rest of my engine together. Once everything's clean, it's easier to get to know it better. I still have other parts that oil touch that need to be washed out, but I want to do everything necessary right here in my garage in order to fix this car. Aside from the gaskets and seals, it's a requirement. Everything has to be from something else, and that's just how it goes on the Hyundai.
thousand miles. A little pitted. Didn't clean up on the wire wheel though. At least it's even. Looks like the last one. Oof, spoke too soon. Not even. Yuck. <laughs> the face on this one is concave. Look at that. This one's just beat to death. The face is all dimpled up. The intake valves are fine, the faces are straight and there's no pitting. The only thing to note is that they're mixed and matched from at least three different cars. Some of the intake valves are marked 6H and some are marked 6T. They're the exact same valves otherwise, so some appear to be from a Hyundai and some from a Mitsubishi. I have a spare set of valves out of the GSX head, and I find it remarkable that the 1.6 liter Hyundai Elantra uses the same exact valves as a Turbo DSM. But there you go. There's the messed up Hyundai valve. Just look at the seat and tell me it doesn't leak. The GSX valves are in much better shape. I hope I can lap the GSX valves into this head without replacing the seats because I really don't want to machine anything at all if I can avoid it. The seats really don't look all that bad. There's a spot or two that feels worse than it looks and I think all that will come out with a little lapping compound and elbow grease. I was hoping not to find this, but I found it. I'd rather do this right instead of regretting it later, so I need to stop for now. I'm going to try to correct it myself here at home, but please forgive me if I have to buy someone donuts again. I'd rather see this car reach its full potential on used parts.